Next, let's talk about eating and drinking. Then, an old man, a keeper of an inn, said, Speak to us of eating and drinking. And he said, Would that you could live on a fragrance of the earth, and like an air planet be sustained by light. But since you must kill to eat, and rob the newly born of its mother's milk to quench your thirst, let it be an act of worship. And let your board stand an altar on which the pure and the innocent of forest and plain are sacrificed for that which is pure and still more innocent in man. When you kill a beast, say to him in your heart, by the same power that slays you, I too am slain, and I too shall be consumed. For the law that delivered you into my hand shall deliver me into a mightier hand. Your blood and my blood is not, but the sap that feeds the tree of heaven. And when you crush an apple with your teeth, say to it in your heart, Your seed shall live in my body, and the buds of your tomorrow shall blossom in my heart. And your fragrance shall be my breath, and together we shall rejoice through all the seasons. And in the autumn, when you gather the grapes of your vineyard for the winepress, say in your heart, I too am a vineyard. And my fruit shall be gathered for the wine press. And like new wine, I shall be kept in eternal vessels. And in the winter, when you draw the wine, let there be in your heart a song for each cup. And let there be in the song a remembrance for the autumn days, and for the vineyard, and for the wine press. Take a minute to take that in while I drink. Ironically, we're talking about eating and drinking, so I'm going to hydrate here. <sighs> <clears throat> when you really think about it eating can be something of a violent thing ask any vegan i'm not vegan but i can definitely understand vegans who do the vegan thing for the humanitarian aspect because factory farming and the slaughter of animals inhumanely and stuff like that is really nasty stuff believe it or not and so i think gabron knew this and I think he knew this because he was rooted in his faith. Because a lot of the imagery that you see here is somewhat biblical. And I'll, I'll let you into some context here. So in the Old Testament, in Mosaic law, or in you know Hebrew law, they used to have, whenever there was a feast day, you would have a lamb that you would sacrifice to God. And that would be kind of a ritual or a rite within the faith. And the way that you did it is that you lived with this lamb for a while. You lived with it and you helped raise it and everything like that. And then when the feast day came, the Sabbath or whatever it may be, you would take the lamb to the temple and put it, you would put it over this like wall. And then the temple or the whoever is working the temple would take the lamb and they would slaughter it and they would render it and they would do so in a holy way so that it was done in a sacramental way in a, in a holy way because the jews recognized that killing for the purposes of eating and for our sustenance was a vile act but we kind of have to do it so we should do it in the name of god or in the way that god would prefer us and that's outlined in some of the old books like if you read leviticus everybody likes to cite the whole part like don't eat shellfish don't eat mixed fabrics and things like that but all those things are outlined in such a way and that's why kosher food is a thing too for a lot of hebrew people they eat kosher food because it is holy and it is rendered in such a way that is sacramental and holy so getting back to Cahill gabron when he starts talking about when you kill a beast, say to him in your heart, by the same power that slays you, I too am slain and I too shall be consumed. So it's not for us to kill mercilessly. Like we're not here to determine life and death. We are subject to the same wrath that may come down to us by God or our higher creator, whatever it may be. For the law that delivered you in my hand shall deliver me in a mightier hand. So in the same way that we are offering up a an animal for slaughter or an animal for eating so too will we be offered up on the last day and your blood and my blood is not but the sap that feeds the tree of heaven so it's kind of i don't want to say nihilistic but it's a very it's a very humbling statement it's gabron saying that 
in the same way that I am slaying you for sustenance and your blood will go over the the dirt below us and stuff. So good read. Yes, yes. Hey, Ty, what's going on? How's it going, buddy? You caught us. We're reading The Prophet by Cahill Gibran, and we were just talking about eating and drinking. So anyhow, so your blood is not but the sap that feeds the tree of heaven. So you will eventually we will die, too, and our blood will you know, feed the tree of heaven. So it's, we are very close to the animals that we are killing for food and things like that. So we shouldn't be so holier than thou when we talk about it. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. I got my lurk command set up. So that's so cool. Lurky Turkey. Great to see you, Ty. I'm doing great. Enjoying some well-read Wednesday. We're sitting here reading some books and just chilling out. So thank you so much for stopping by. and Thank you for that lurk. So, that's the natural living thing that's like the organic thing and then there's the animal the apple and then the grape and the wine so we'll talk about the apple next so the apple says your seeds shall live in my body and the buds of your tomorrow shall blossom in my heart and your fragrance shall be my breath and together we shall rejoice through all the seasons so when you're taking life from something or you're eating an apple you're taking its seeds and ideally you shouldn't eat the seeds because that's bad for your appendix but when you eat the seed it goes into you and then it flourishes from within you. So my read of that is that when you consume of natural things of like apples and stuff like that, you are consuming of the earth. You are becoming more united with the natural order of things around you. So you should acknowledge and you should appreciate that they're growing or that this thing would have grown had you left it alone so it's on you now, since you're consuming it, to continue to grow yourself. Otherwise, you would be doing a disservice to the thing that you're eating. It's kind of abstract to think about that when you're thinking of, oh, I'm in service of an apple that I just ate. But that's how I read into it. And then finally, there's the analogy of the grapes and the wine press. And in the autumn, when you gather the grapes of your vineyard for the wine press, say in your heart, I too am a vineyard, and my fruit shall be gathered for the wine press. And like new wine, I shall be kept in eternal vessels. Think about eternal vessels. When we are pressed, we are put into eternal vessels. Like when we die, we go into coffins or we are cremated and we're put into an urn. I think that's what he means by the eternal vessels here. And in winter, when you draw the wine, let there be a song in your heart for each cup. And let there be a song of remembrance for the autumn days and for the vineyard and for the wine press. So it may be hard to draw this analogy or it may be hard to draw this conclusion, but... I think Gilbron here is not just talking about wine and celebrating, but he's talking about our own lives as well. Let there be a song for every cup. So everything that you do in life, let somebody remember it. And let there be a song of remembrance for the autumn days. That's your life and passing. And for the vineyard, the world that you live on and the wine press, the way that you died. So have a song for each of these. People should know what your life was like, the good things that you did, where you grew up and what grew you, the vineyard. And then the wine press, what eventually killed you, I guess. So it's kind of the full circle of humanity in that way. So yeah, there's a lot of illustration there, a lot of illusion in that particular writing. So yeah.